Welcome to St. Malachy's the Actors' Chapel for the second Sunday of Lent. sacred mysteries. Let us pause to call to mind our sins. Give us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. Thank you. 
A reading from the book of Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also forgive us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. According to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. We have in our life a relationship with God, and we have a relationship also with Jesus, and to that end, as well, a relationship with the Spirit. We experience all three. That's the beauty of the Trinity, a community of persons, a way of coming to understand and to appreciate the gift that we have that we call life, and our responsibility for what it means to be alive on this earth, in God's plan, preparing for life with God forever and eternity. And so, when we look at the relationships, we realize that, as the Old Testament tells us today, Abraham had a relationship with God. He was hearing from Him, experiencing His presence, and he was able to put all his trust in Him, that he would bring his son to the altar of sacrifice, hearing God's word, sensing his presence, but not seeing and not interacting in the way that most of us would be accustomed to doing so if we were asked to walk someone into a situation that was uncertain. If we were asked potentially to put a loved one in harm's way, 
We know that when a loved one goes to the hospital for a procedure, we go with them, we're there, and we remind them as they go into that curtain area of uncertain that we'll be right outside, we'll be waiting for them. We might even say a prayer with them before they go in. But we certainly are there and preoccupied with their well-being because we don't know we experience that uncertainty firsthand. It happens too for parents when they send their kids off to school, when they leave home. There's always that nagging question, did I tell them everything they needed to know? Did I give them enough reassurance, enough resources so that they could figure out any trouble they get into? And so, not unlike the relationship back to God, there is this experience that we have as human beings of having to find God in the midst of things that aren't as obvious. We have to listen. We have to close our eyes and feel. We have to be aware of our environment around us. The transfiguration takes us literally on an experience, an adventure. Up the mountain we go with the disciples, and they go with Jesus, their wonderful new friend, who speaks words that are inspirational, who has got extraordinary charisma, able to touch people, move their lives, and change them. They want to be with him. They want him as a part of their life. And so they take this wonderful trust walk. And instead of going and leaving and disappearing from them, he remains in their midst. And God, in his goodness, transfigures Jesus and allows him to be revealed to these disciples. And yet they still don't quite understand all of it. It's quite terrifying for them, quite amazing for them to be a part of, not unlike in our own experience in life, that sometimes when we go to pray and we're there and we're talking to the Lord and we really sense that we're in his presence, that sometimes the things that come to us, the graces that are bestowed are amazing. We find somewhere in our heart and our mind a way into courage so that we can work through our fear and go and do something like participate in a, a rehabilitation program, learn to walk or to speak all over again, that we can surrender ourselves in a program of recovery and overcome the demons that have been plaguing us and holding us back. Because again, we have a sense that we're in a personal relationship with God. The relationship of the disciples to Jesus changed radically on that mountain. They saw him as something new, something brighter, greater than anything that could be done on earth. So therefore they experienced the presence of God, and now the presence of Jesus, whom they would come to know and to believe and to call upon forever and after as Son of God. For us in our Lenten time, these two experiences are there for us as well. Some people are fond of saying I prefer just to be with God in my own way. And that's a way in initially. It's not the perfect way. Perfection is in the relationship that we cultivate with Christ Jesus. For there we hear words, we see deeds, we experience a real presence because God wanted that as the gift to us so that we would never have to go through the anguish or the questioning or the uncertainty that Abraham overcame 
because of his absolute trust in God. Not all of us are that strong. Few of us. Knowing that and loving that part of our human vulnerability, our God gives us his son, that we might have someone to rely on, someone to not only go with us into uncertainty, but to also go behind the curtain with us, to be there as we do what we need to do, to heal, to change, to be strengthened, to find certainty in our life again. How good a God, and how good it is that we are here with him, just as the disciples were on that mountain so long ago. Let us profess the faith that unites us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us together offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For the Church, may the Holy Spirit strengthen her in teaching God's law in spirit and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For government leaders, may God inspire their creation of policies that follow his commandments, especially that of respect for human dignity and life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those suffering any type of disease or affliction, may Christ bring them comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For those of us gathered here, may the Lord bless us in our Lenten journey. Let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, may Christ who died for us welcome them to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. For all special petitions brought before the altar, let us pray to the Lord. We offer our prayers and ask that you answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we place before you with joy these offerings which we bring as eternal remedy, praying that they may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, as without end we acclaim. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Saints Malachi and Genesius, Cecilia and Vitus, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, forever and ever. Amen. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, we pray as Jesus taught us.
us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for his blessing. O Lord, look upon those who call to you, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you and your loved ones forever and ever. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.